Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at GermanPod101.com. Yay! Hi, it's Elisa. Welcome to a new video lesson. 10 lines you need to know for introducing yourself. Let's begin. My name is Alisa. My name is Elisa. My name is Alisa. What's your name? Was ist dein Name? Hallo, es ist schön, Sie kennenzulernen. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hallo, es ist schön, Sie kennenzulernen. Hello, it is nice to meet you. As in English, when you introduce yourself and you meet somebody for the first time, you just add, of course, es ist schön, Sie kennenzulernen. It is nice to meet you. Eines meiner Hobbys ist, mit meinem Hund spazieren zu gehen. One of my hobbies is to walk my dog. Eines meiner Hobbys ist, mit meinem Hund spazieren zu gehen. One of my hobbies is to walk my dog. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I have a dog, a German Shepherd, and I actually love to go on a walk with him and play with his ball. He loves it. Yeah, what is your hobby? Ich bin... Jahre alt. I am years old. Ich bin Punkt, 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 Jahre alt. I am dot, 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 years old. Wie alt bist du? How old are you? Ich bin Grafik- und Textildesignerin. I am a graphic and textile designer. Ich bin is used for many, many things. It's something you should definitely um, learn and memorize because it's for almost everything. Ich, ich bin hungrig, I'm hungry. So ich bin in this case is referred to your profession. So please tell me what do you do? Ich komme aus Deutschland. I am from Germany. Ich komme aus Deutschland. I am from Germany. Woher kommst du? Where are you from? Leave me in the comments. Ich höre gerne Musik. I enjoy listening to music. Ich höre gerne Musik. I enjoy listening to music. What is your favorite kind of music? Was ist deine Lieblingsmusik? Ich lebe in... Punkt, Punkt, Punkt. I live in... Ich lebe in Punkt, Punkt, Punkt. I live in blank. Ich lebe in Köln. I live in Cologne. I used to live there, now I don't, but uh, Cologne is a very fun city. If you have a chance, go visit. Um, yeah, where do you live? Wo lebst du? Leave in the comments. Ich lerne seit Punkt, Punkt, Jahren Deutsch. I've been learning German for dot 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 years. Ich lerne seit Punkt Punkt Deutsch. I've been learning German for blank. Obviously, I grew up uh, talking German. Ich lerne Deutsch auf germanpod101.com. I'm learning German at germanpod101.com. Ich lerne Deutsch auf germanpod 101.com I'm learning German at germanpod101.com How long have you been learning German with germanpod101.com? Thank you for watching the top 10 lines you need to know for introducing yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave me in the comments what was your favorite line. Bye! Back to the basics. <laughs> My name is Alisa. My name is Elisa. So that is a very important sentence you need to know. Okay, that was so not funny. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Henrik. Welcome to a new episode of GermanPop101.com. As today is the 30th birthday of my brother, I thought let's put a topic that suits today and today we're going on about top 10 gifts you must know in German. Let's go and have fun. By the way, this is the party room. We're going to have the party tonight. So right at the spot, we're going to finish up the lesson and then I'm going to change and hit the dance floor, right? Okay, as I'm a nice person, let's start with the easy one. Laptop. Laptop. 
Same word German, same word English. Ich habe einen neuen Laptop gekauft. I bought a new laptop computer. Yeah, laptops are very useful. I um, use laptops to um, prepare my lessons for you guys. Uh, yeah, I think today, uh, either for school, for work, for everywhere you need a laptop. So a laptop is always a good present, especially when you're still going to school and you probably also want to use it for gaming or making music or whatever. It's nice to have a laptop. Very good laptops, very expensive, but you know that, right? The good part of this word, it's the same in English as it's in German, so very easy to remember. Laptop. Laptop. Parfüm. Perfume. Dieses Parfüm riecht echt gut. This perfume smells really good. Uh, I guess, yeah, this is a very um, good present for your girlfriend or for your mom or just for any female person. But um, don't be so stereotypical. Also, men like to have a good smell. So maybe try for your next, uh, for your daddy's next birthday to give him a perfume. Could be surprised. By the way, my favorite one is the Giorgio Armani perfume. Very good smell. Buch. Book. Ich lese gerade ein gutes Buch. I'm reading a good book at the moment. Uh, I don't know if you like to read. Um, I do sometimes. I'm just a bit lazy because I'm so slow reading. But right now I actually do read a book. My favorite author is Ken Follett. I don't know if you've heard about him. Does really good um, history-based romance. Um, you should try it. Ken Follett, good author. My favorite. Weltkarte. World map. Ich mag es, auf der Weltkarte zu stöbern. I like to browse around the world map. Indeed, I love it. World maps are so cool. You can just dream of all the places you want to go. And um, then, I don't know, South America seems so close to Europe. Or uh, even Australia is not that far away. And <laughs> um, I just like to look at it and imagine what happens in this part of the world. So if you were looking for a place for me, a world map would be a good choice. Camera. Camera. Kannst du mir vielleicht heute deine Kamera ausleihen? Could you lend me your camera today? Oh uh, yeah, also very easy one. Camera, camera, almost the same thing. Um, but if you want to give a camera as a present, it's I think it should be a really good one. Because instead of giving a crappy one, you should give what I'm telling you next. Smartphone. Smartphone. Es gibt viel zu viele verschiedene Smartphone Modelle. There are too many types of smartphones. Indeed, there are a lot, and I, I just uh, recently um, uh, ordered a new one. It didn't arrive yet, so you still got my old crappy smartphone videos. But yeah, I didn't know how to choose. They're just, the choice is too big. But instead of giving a crappy camera, just give a legit smartphone, and I think you should be good, because everybody knows today's smartphone cameras are pretty nice. So yeah, that's the cool thing. I mean, the, the choice of smartphones is huge, but also there are many really good ones, so... You don't need to give crappy cameras anymore. If somebody really appreciates photographs, give them a very nice camera, but other than that, smartphone might be the better choice. Lexicon. Dictionary. Ich habe ein Englisch-Französisch Lexicon. I have an English-French dictionary. Honestly, I don't know if a dictionary is really the best um, present. Maybe for the nerds. If they're nerds, um, yeah. Give them dictionaries, just dictionaries about stuff. Uh, I actually do have a French English dictionary, so maybe I'm a nerd. I mean, I do videos and stuff. No, that's my best uh, gift idea for the day. Ein Freiflug nach Deutschland. A free flight to Germany. Uh, sie hat einen Freiflug nach Deutschland in der Lotterie gewonnen. She won a free flight to Germany in the lottery. Uh, yeah, you must be really lucky to win it in a lottery, so that's why I'm telling you it's a very good gift idea, okay? If you have parents watching, and you have kids, and you want to be a very good parent and give a very nice present, give them a free flight to Germany to, so that they could learn German right on the spot. Uh, another very good one. Schokolade. Chocolate. Kinder lieben Schokolade. Children love chocolate. Yeah, that's true, so want to make a kid happy? Just give them some chocolates. I personally prefer more the gum stuff, but chocolate is good. Tee. Tee. Der Tee war mir einfach zu bitter. The tea was just too bitter. Um, yeah, 
my sister, she loves tea. I actually gave her tea for her birthday once. If you're coming from England, then you could give some nice cups of tea. Um, they have good tea in England. Sorry for that. Um, no, but yeah, I mean, there are people who love tea. I'm not a coffee person, but it's like my sister, she loves tea, so I gave her tea for her birthday. Yeah, but yeah, if you have little kids, you better stick to chocolate. I hope in this lesson today you get some good ideas for presents or for gifts. Um, if not, I hope that at least you picked up some German. Uh, I'm looking forward for the party today. I need to still prepare some stuff here. I don't know if you've noticed, it looks quite nice, right? But there's stuff to do. So, I wish you a good day. If you like what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I can learn much more German and then probably you also might get ideas for much more presents. That's it for today. My brother arrives with the motorcycle, so ciao ciao. See you next time. Party, party. Guten Tag, ist das hier die Anmeldung? Ja, wie heißen Sie? Paul Martins. Hm, P-O-H... Nein, P-A-U-L, Paul, Paul auf Deutsch. Aha, und der Nachname? M-A-R-T-E-N-S. Danke. Herr Cardigan, Sie sind sicher Amerikaner, oder? Nein, ich komme aus Kanada. Oh, Entschuldigung. Es ist schon okay. Ich wohne in Washington. Und Sie kommen aus Kanada? Ja, ich komme aus Calgary. Und Sie, Frau Löwen? Ich bin Deutsche. Kommen Sie aus Berlin? Nein, ich komme nicht aus Berlin. Ich wohne und arbeite in Berlin, aber ich komme aus Leipzig. Herr Cardigan... Bitte nennen Sie mich nur Joe. Also gut. Ich bin Anke. Joe, kommst du als Tourist nach Berlin oder beruflich? Als Tourist. Und wie lange bleibst du? Ich bleibe zwei Wochen. Entschuldigung? Ja? Ich suche die Goethe-Schule. Die Goethe-Schule? Ja. Ich suche die auch. Hallo, Herr Martins. Willkommen. Ähm, um, hallo. Wie geht es Ihnen, Frau Schneider? How do... Mir geht es gut, danke. Und Ihnen? Auch gut, danke. Sind Sie müde? Nicht sehr müde, nein. Sehr gut. Hi, my name is Elisa. Welcome to 10 Reasons to Learn German. Es ist eine schöne Sprache. It's a beautiful language. Es ist eine schöne Sprache. It's a beautiful language. I'm sure that's one of the reasons why you are learning German as well. Ich lebe in dem Land, wo die Sprache gesprochen wird. I live in a country that speaks the language. Ich lebe in dem Land, wo die Sprache gesprochen wird. I live in a country that speaks the language. If you come to Germany and want to learn German and study German. I mean, since you are in Germany, it would be, of course, easier to get around even in the supermarket or just different kind of things like getting on the bus, on the train and finding your way. It's all in German. So it, it's a good reason to learn German. Ich lerne die Sprache, um jemanden damit zu beeindrucken. I'm learning the language to impress someone. Ich lerne die Sprache, um jemanden damit zu beeindrucken. I'm learning the language to impress someone. To be honest, I don't think that's a good reason, because you should impress yourself. You should do it for yourself, not for anybody. And it's your own challenge. And, you know, I always have these little challenges I do, and if I overcome, then I'm happy. Ich liebe die Kultur und Menschen, die diese Sprache sprechen. I love the culture and the people who speak the language. Ich liebe die Kultur und Menschen, die diese Sprache sprechen. I love the culture and the people who speak the language. Well, who doesn't love Germans, right? In Germany, it's a beautiful country. The people are really friendly and nice, and if you have questions, they will always help you. Ich liebe es einfach, Sprachen zu lernen. I just love learning languages. Ich liebe es einfach, Sprachen zu lernen. I just love learning languages. Yeah, some people are really talented with 
languages and they want to learn more. They enjoy studying different languages. Ich liebe es zu reisen. I love traveling. Ich liebe es zu reisen. I love traveling. Yeah, I think that's very important actually. When you travel, you should definitely know a little bit of the language or the country you're traveling to. I just think it's nice to know the basics if you travel to Germany. Germans mostly, of course, speak English, but I think they're also happy like to see if somebody is kind of really trying and uh, just puts a smile on their faces. Ich möchte meine Lieblingssongs, Filme und TV-Sendungen verstehen. I want to understand my favorite songs, movies and TV shows. The younger generation is really uh, getting into movies, especially in Berlin, and there's a lot of movies and like dramas and TV shows. And of course, in order to understand, I think it's important to to learn German. It's also a good way to learn German, I think, if you are learning German to watch the movies and TV shows in German. Ich möchte meinen Horizont erweitern und internationaler werden. I want to open my mind and become more international. Ich möchte meinen Horizont erweitern und internationaler werden. I want to open my mind and become more international. I think this is my favorite reason. I think too that it's so important to um, be aware of the whole world, the different cultures we have and, you know, become more like a international person and I think if you learn a language, you also kind of learn a lo like a lot about the culture and the, the, the way people live. And if you want to open up your mind more in your, in your way of thinking, I think it's very important to learn a new language. Ich möchte mich gerne mit der Familie meines Partners auf ihrer Sprache unterhalten. I want to speak to my partner's family in their language. You might be dating a German, and you're, but you're from another country, so you, of course, you get interested in the culture and the language. I think that's a normal thing. And in order to speak with their family or, you know, spend time on certain holidays, it's important to know their language. And um, if that's a reason, let me know. I'm curious if you're maybe dating a German and that's why you're actually studying German. Meine Familie kommt aus der Umgebung, wo die Sprache gesprochen wird. My family comes from a place where the language is spoken. Meine Familie kommt aus der Umgebung, wo die Sprache gesprochen wird. My family comes from a place where the language is spoken. I have some friends too who are, who are part German, but they grew up uh, in the States maybe, and they don't know any German, so they're interested in the country and culture, so that's the reason why they study German. What is your reason for studying German? I would love to know. Maybe it's another totally different reason or maybe it was one of the reasons um, I just stated. Let me know. I'm curious and um, hope to see you soon and don't forget to subscribe. Bye! German. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Henrik. Welcome to a new episode of GermanPort101.com. Today I have a very cool lesson for you, very interesting, very important. I'll teach you top 10 phrases you'll need to go on a date. So, if you've ever thought on maybe going out on a date with a German, this might be very interesting stuff for you. Let's go. Möchtest du mit mir Abendessen gehen? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Möchtest du mit mir Abendessen gehen? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? So yeah, classic um, question for a first date. If you're not sure what you want to do with a person, really just spend time with her, getting to talk to know more about each other. That's the classic, going out for dinner. So you can ask, hey, would you like to go get dinner with me? Möchtest du mit mir Abendessen gehen? The most classic question probably for a first date, huh? Hast du dieses Wochenende Zeit? Are you free this weekend? Hast du dieses Wochenende Zeit? Are you free this weekend? So, after you finished your first date probably and it's been nice, you can go step forward and ask, hey, let's meet this weekend, um, I don't know, do some fun activity out in the woods or go shopping, whatever, but first you need to know, is this person free on the weekend? So, you should ask, hey, are you free this weekend? Hast du dieses Wochenende Zeit? 
Möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Would you like to hang out with me? Möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Would you like to hang out with me? Uh, yeah, this is just really general. Also, probably if you don't know the person as well uh, as much, <laughs> um, and you just want to figure out, hey, is this person interested in hanging out with me? You could ask. You want to spend time with me? Möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Or if you want to make it sound a little bit more slangy, you should ask. Möchtest du mit mir abhängen? Like really, literally, you want to hang out with me? Abhängen is hang out. So yeah. Either way, the more classy is like, möchtest du mit mir Zeit verbringen? Or just like a little bit more cool, hey, möchtest du mit mir abhängen? Also probably depends on the age. If you're rather in your 30s, 40s upwards, you would probably ask for some time, for the Zeit. Whereas when you're a teenager, just play cool, say, möchtest du mit mir abhängen? Du bist so süß. You are so cute. Du bist so süß. You're so cute. It's a nice compliment for if like you're dating, having a date with a cute person and I don't know, you're really having fun, then you can just like let this slip. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Like, oh, du bist so süß. Um, it's nice, it works both for boy to girl, girl to boy. Both can be cute. Du siehst gut aus. You look great. Du siehst gut aus. You look great. Yeah, this is what you say when you meet the person to go on the date and probably most person will dress up a little bit, like put some put some makeup on, put the high heels on, like in the CS song, right? Um, and then yeah, to appreciate all the effort the person does to look pretty, just give him a compliment. Hey, wow, you look great. This is good aus. They will appreciate. Das war ein toller Abend. That was a great evening. Das war ein toller Abend. That was a great night. Apparently, you don't say this in the beginning of the evening, you said it in the end of the evening. And if you enjoyed your time, just let the person know. Um, I, I always like to hear that people enjoyed the time with me when, when I'm on a date or when, when I just spend time with friends. And then in the end, I say, hey, well, that was a cool night. And everybody knows, hey, cool, we had a good time. So why not just saying it? Ich werde dich nach Hause fahren. I will drive you home. Ich werde dich nach Hause fahren. I will drive you home. Yeah, if you're a gentleman, you should do this, or a gentle lady, if, if you're the driver for the night, um, just offer, yeah, bring you home. Germany is a safe country, so we have nice public transport. But of course, if you're on a date, you wanna, you wanna show, hey, oh, I, I'm a gentleman, or I'm a nice lady, I'll drive you home. I'll drive you home to make it easier for you. Wann sollen wir uns morgen treffen? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Wann sollen wir uns morgen treffen? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Yeah, apparently you've already set up a date, but you don't know what time you're gonna meet or where you wanna go, whatever, then just to clarify, you ask the question, hey, what, what time do we meet tomorrow? Um, I'm probably going to ask this very often because I'm not so good in remembering dates, times, all this kind of stuff disappears from my memory, so I will use, I, I'll use the sentence a lot. Wann treffen wir uns? Zu welcher Zeit? What time? Shall we meet? Können wir uns wiedersehen? Can I see you again? Können wir uns wiedersehen? Can I see you again? Also, yeah, if you, if you like the date, if you like the person, you want to see her again, just be polite. Hey, können wir uns wiedersehen? You can ask it in a cute way and then the person totally can't even say no to you. Was hältst du von diesem Ort? What do you think of this place? Was hältst du von diesem Ort? What do you think of this place? Yeah, if you found a if you found a nice spot, then suggest hey let's stay here. For example, in my city we have it's like a little bit in a mountainish area. Yeah, I know Swiss and Austrian people would disagree because it's like not huge mountains, it's more like hills. But anyways. If you, if you go a little bit up a hill, then there's a nice spot where you can oversee the, the entire city, and um, that's where many people take their dates. So you could you could make it seem just like casually fun. Oh, hey, what do you think about this place? Not like planned long time. Even though probably the person will appreciate if you have put a little bit of thought in where you go. Um, 
So yeah, it's 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 nice to ask the debate uh, if she likes the place you took her or him, like whatever you prefer. But it already the end. I mean, you notice. The sentences we use in Germany are basically the same that I used in, in America, or at least in English-speaking countries. Um, just translate it. We don't have really a lot of different habits of how we ask to go out on a date. So this should be easy for you. Just find a German girl, a girl, boy, German boy or German girl. Find one. Use those phrases, and I bet you will have some success to to go on a date. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Leave some comments if if you let me know about your experiences uh, on dates with Germans. Maybe if you used some of the sentences, visit uh, germanpot101.com to learn even more German, to impress your dates with your German, and then I see you in the next lesson. Ciao, ciao. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. Express Zug ticket. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Wagen 1, achte Reihe, Sitz C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Feiertage an jedem dritten Sonntag im Monat. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean?
The display reads, the next train will not stop. Achtung, Zugdurchfahrt. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Ostausgang. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. Ich heiße Laura. Sehr erfreut. Hi, I'm Laura. Nice to meet you. In this series, we are going to learn basic German expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to introduce ourselves in German. We'll start speaking right away, but first, it's important to clarify that in German there is a difference between the formal and the informal language. Let's first see how German people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. Hi, I'm Laura. Nice to meet you. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. Start by saying Hallo, ich heiße, then say your name. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Finally say Schön, dich kennenzulernen. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Guten Tag, ich heiße Laura Meyer. Schön, Sie kennenzulernen. Good day, I'm Laura Meyer. Nice to meet you. Guten Tag, ich heiße Laura Meyer. Schön, Sie kennenzulernen. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at these expressions together. Hallo has been substituted with the formal greeting Guten Tag, German for good day. Ich heiße Laura has not been changed. Ich heiße simply means I am. However, during a formal self-introduction, we also say our last name. So I said Laura Meyer. Here, you would say your full name. Finally, pay attention to the ending. We went from dich kennenzulernen to sie kennenzulernen. What is changing is the German word for you. In a formal sentence, we use the more polite word sie. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in German is Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. The formal way to introduce yourself is Guten Tag, ich heiße Laura Meyer. Schön, Sie kennenzulernen. Now it's time for Laura's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. If you're not sure whether to use Schön, Dich kennenzulernen or Schön, Sie kennenzulernen, just say simply Sehr erfreut, as I said at the beginning of this lesson. If you use the correct sentence with German people, they're definitely going to be impressed. Today, we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Fertig? Are you ready? Los! So let's start! There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Danke. Danke. Danke means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add sehr. Danke sehr. Sehr means a lot. So Danke sehr is like saying thank you very much. During the last lesson we discussed the informal and the formal way of speaking German. Danke is the casual way to thank someone. If you want to be more formal, there is another phrase you should use. 
Ich danke Ihnen. Ich danke Ihnen. Let's break this phrase down. Ich is I. And danke means thanks. Ihnen is a formal word for you in the dative case. Notice that we don't use Sie as in the last lesson. We will discuss German pronouns in more depth in a later lesson. The full sentence once again. Ich danke Ihnen. How do you answer? It's easy. Here are two different ways to do it. The first is bitte schön. Bitte schön. Bitte schön can be used with just about anybody. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression gern geschehen. Gern geschehen. Literally, this phrase means I liked it to happen or happened with pleasure. But it has become a common and polite way to respond to someone thanking you. So when someone says Danke to us, we can simply reply with Bitte schön or Gern geschehen. Now it's time for Laura's insights. If you are not sure about whether to use Danke or Ich danke Ihnen, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Danke can be used with just about anyone, anywhere and at any time. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Danke. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Germany. Fertig? Are you ready? Los! So let's start! The most used informal greeting is Hallo. Hallo. Hallo means hi or hello. We should only use this greeting with friends or relatives. The most used formal greetings will change depending on the time of day. Let's start with Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Literally, Guten Tag means good day. As a rule of thumb, we can use Guten Tag only during the daytime, from late morning until early evening. In the morning we say Guten Morgen, good morning. Guten Morgen. During the evening we say Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Tag, Morgen and Abend is German for day, morning and evening, respectively. Easy, right? What should you say when you leave? German people usually say Auf Wiedersehen when leaving in a formal situation. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen means goodbye. If we say goodbye to friends or our relatives, we use the informal word Tschüss. Tschüss. Now you can greet people in many different ways in German. Let's review them all again. First, the greetings. Informally, we simply say Hallo. Formally, use Guten Morgen in the morning, Guten Tag in the afternoon and Guten Abend in the evening. When leaving in a formal situation, we say Auf Wiedersehen. And in an informal situation, it's Tschüss. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Laura's insights. Due to a huge variety of dialects in Germany, you might hear many different greeting phrases depending on the area. In Austria and in the Catholic southern part of Germany, they even say Grüß Gott, which means greetings to God. In the past, people from the north could barely talk to people from the south, since they spoke very different languages. But nowadays, if you use these common phrases, then everyone will understand you. I'm sure. During the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Sprechen Sie Englisch? Do you already know it? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in German, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Sprichst du Englisch? Sprichst du Englisch? In German, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used. Please notice the word du in the middle of the sentence. Remember that this is the informal way to say you. 
The first word is sprichst, which means to speak. Because it is referring to du, it is conjugated to du sprichst. If you ask a question in German, you change the du sprichst to the interrogative form sprichst du. And you probably recognize English to be English. Sprichst du English? To learn how to properly conjugate verbs, like sprechen, please look at our Absolute Beginner series on germanpod101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. We are now going to make the sentence formal. First, we need to use the formal version of you, which is sie. If we change the word for you, we will conjugate the verb differently. It becomes sprechen instead of sprichst, like in the informal version. Everything else stays the same. Sprechen Sie Englisch? Sprechen Sie Englisch? Adding Entschuldigen Sie, excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. Entschuldigen Sie, sprechen Sie Englisch? Entschuldigen Sie, sprechen Sie Englisch? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ja, yes. Ja, ein bisschen, a little, ein bisschen. Nein, ich spreche nicht Englisch. No, I don't speak English. Nein, ich spreche nicht Englisch. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say nicht after the verb sprechen. Notice also that the verb spreche is slightly different than sprechen. Remember, the verb changes depending on the pronoun used. We are now talking about ich, German for I. Thus, I do not speak is, ich spreche nicht. Now it's time for Laura's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. German people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute English with Italienisch for Italian, Russisch for Russian, Spanish for Spanish, Französisch for French. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Entschuldigen Sie, sprechen Sie Englisch? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Entschuldigen Sie, which means excuse me in formal German. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use Entschuldigen Sie and other words when apologizing in German. We should use Entschuldigen Sie in formal situations, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, Entschuldigen Sie, einen Kaffee bitte. Excuse me, a coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. Entschuldigen Sie, wo ist der Ausgang? Excuse me, where's the exit please? Sometimes we also hear people say bitte which means the same thing when you want to draw somebody's attention. We use this phrase if you want to be polite. Bitte. The informal way to say excuse me is Entschuldige. Entschuldige. Just like Entschuldigen Sie, we can use Entschuldige when asking a question or when apologizing. We can also use the word Entschuldigung if you are not sure whether to use the formal or informal way. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is es tut mir leid. It means I'm sorry and can be used in both formal and informal situations. Es tut mir leid. First we have es or it. Next we have the German word for to do, conjugated for the pronoun es, tut. The word mir is German for me. Finally, we have leid, literally meaning sorrow. Es tut mir leid. Now it's time for Laura's insights. Please remember that in Germany, if you accidentally bump into someone, we don't say, I'm sorry, es tut mir leid. Instead, we say, entschuldigen Sie, entschuldige or entschuldigung. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, 
optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Give it a try now. Sign up for your account. Just click the link in the description. Ein Mann und eine Frau schauen sich das Menü in einem Restaurant an. Was wird der Mann bestellen? Was wirst du bestellen? Die Pizza sieht lecker aus. Ich denke, die nehme ich. Ich hatte gestern schon Pizza, also... Okay, dann wie wäre es mit Hamburger? Hört sich toll an, das nehme ich. Was wird der Mann bestellen? Ein Mann und eine Frau schauen sich das Menü in einem Restaurant an. Was wird der Mann bestellen? Was wirst du bestellen? Die Pizza sieht lecker aus. Ich denke, die nehme ich. Ich hatte gestern schon Pizza, also... Okay, dann wie wäre es mit Hamburger? Hört sich toll an. Das nehme ich. Ein Mann ruft beim Arzt an. Um wie viel Uhr sollte er in der Arztpraxis sein? Hallo, wie kann ich Ihnen helfen? Um wie viel Uhr schließen Sie heute? Wir schließen um 18 Uhr, aber bitte kommen Sie vor 17.30 Uhr vorbei. Okay, danke schön. Um wie viel Uhr sollte er in der Arztpraxis sein? Ein Mann ruft beim Arzt an. Um wie viel Uhr sollte er in der Arztpraxis sein? Hallo, wie kann ich Ihnen helfen? Um wie viel Uhr schließen Sie heute? Wir schließen um 18 Uhr, aber bitte kommen Sie vor 17.30 Uhr vorbei. Okay, danke schön. Ein Junge liest in seinem Tagebuch. Was war das Erste, was der Junge heute getan hat? Das Wetter war toll heute. Ich bin heute Nachmittag zum Schwimmbad gegangen. Und abends bin ich ins Kino gegangen. Ich habe auch den ganzen Morgen gelernt. Heute war nicht übel. Was war das Erste, was der Junge heute getan hat? Ein Junge liest in seinem Tagebuch. Was war das Erste, was der Junge heute getan hat? Das Wetter war toll heute. Ich bin heute Nachmittag zum Schwimmbad gegangen. Und abends bin ich ins Kino gegangen. Ich habe auch den ganzen Morgen gelernt. Heute war nicht übel. Eine Frau und ein Mann schauen sich eine Fotografie an. Nach welchem Foto schauen sie? Das ist ein Foto des Fußballteams, in dem ihr Sohn spielt, oder? Welcher davon ist ihr Sohn? Dieser hier. Oh, er ist der Größte. Ja, er ist sogar größer als ich. 
Nach welchem Foto schauen Sie? Eine Frau und ein Mann schauen sich eine Fotografie an. Nach welchem Foto schauen Sie? Das ist ein Foto des Fußballteams, in dem Ihr Sohn spielt, oder? Welcher davon ist Ihr Sohn? Dieser hier. Oh, er ist der Größte. Ja, er ist sogar größer als ich. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. 
Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five-minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence-building exercises part of your language learning process. 
In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done know, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you want to speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When you start out learning a foreign language, everything is exciting. You pick up new words and basic phrases fairly quickly. The first time you say a greeting or answer the question, how are you, you might even get a little thrill. Speaking fluently doesn't feel that far off. And at this point, it really does seem like language learning isn't all that difficult. But after a week or two, things begin to change. After a few weeks of study, you start to hit walls as you're faced with strange grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Everything about learning a new language seemed promising and hopeful before, but now you start to realize how difficult it's going to be. Speaking the language now feels like a long, far-off goal that you may or may not achieve one day. But don't let the innocence of being an absolute beginner or the disillusionment of being an experienced learner discourage you from learning. Speaking a new language may not be as far off as you thought. In this video, we'll look at three tips to help you practice your speaking skills, no matter what level you're at. Number one, practice with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is by far one of the most effective things you can do to improve your speaking abilities. 
think of speaking a foreign language as riding a bike. After a certain point, you can't read or theorize about how to do it. You have to actually do it. If you can practice speaking with native speakers who correct you and give good feedback, then you'll be well on your way to improving your speaking. But where can you find native speakers to practice with? If you live in or near a major city, there's a good chance there are some native speakers there. You might even get lucky and discover an entire community. Do a little research into the demographics of your city, or simply keep your eyes open the next time you go through town. You can also attend a language exchange or cultural event. Meetup is a site for local enthusiast groups, and there are usually some language-speaking clubs or cultural clubs there. If you're unable to find native speakers where you live, then jump online and find them there. There are a lot of free online exchanges that allow you to connect with other language learners from all over the globe via text, audio, or video chat. Look for a speaker who is learning your native language. You can spend an hour or so helping each other in your respective target languages. This is a highly practical and helpful way to learn. It's also a great way to learn more directly about the culture you're studying in a real way. Number two, devote some time to learning pronunciation. Pronunciation often isn't the first skill people think of working on when learning a foreign language, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Truth be told, you don't absolutely need a great accent to speak or understand every language. However, a decent accent can vastly improve your listening and speaking abilities in ways you might not expect. Being able to pronounce words and sounds makes it a lot easier for you to remember and understand new words simply by hearing them. If you can physically make a sound with your mouth, then you can mentally remember it. Once you have a good accent, the new language won't sound as foreign as it once did, and you'll be able to understand rapid speech, as well as pick up the definition of new words based on their conversational context. But how can you improve your accent? If you're serious about developing your accent, then you'll want to dissect the language's sound system into its individual parts. First by letters, then individual words, followed by whole phrases. Start doing some mild research on the phonetics of your target language. You don't have to get too technical here. Just try to get an idea of some of the main differences between it and your native language. Find out where native speakers usually put their tongue while saying certain sounds, or pay attention to the shape of their mouths when they speak. Is it open or closed? These subtle differences are what really help you improve. Once you get the letters down, start listening to native audio and compare your pronunciation to the native speakers. Our language learning program's playback feature is a great way to accomplish this. Take a phrase from a lesson and start by practicing the individual words, playing the audio back at a slower speed and then again at a regular speed. After comparing your speech to the audio, combine the words to make complete phrases, imitating the intonation of the native speakers. This precise method of pronunciation practice is one of the most efficient and effective ways to learn pronunciation. Number three, imitate, don't just repeat. Anytime you speak, do your best to imitate the native speakers you've heard and practice with. Match the way their intonation rises and falls. Pay attention to their word order. It's even a good idea to match some of their body language. This degree of imitation will probably feel weird at first, but it reinforces fluency in the language and breaks you out of the parrot trap, where you simply learn and speak through rote memorization or repetition. This is a common problem that's often cited with other less effective language learning methods. Speaking a language is like playing music or dancing. You don't wanna just know it. You wanna live in the moment and feel it as you use it. You don't sit and think of what you're going to say in your native language before you say it. Why would you expect to do the same in a new one? Don't let ruffled expectations make you think that speaking a new language is impossible. Yes, it's difficult, but it probably isn't as difficult as you think it is. With a little determination and some faithful practice, you might be surprised how quick and how far you can progress. Use these tips to better practice the language and see real results in your speaking abilities. And for even more ways to practice your speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. 
sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.